and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators. Now, these last couple of episodes that you've been watching, we are in the magnificent Masonic Temple here in Warren, Rhode Island. And 30 years ago, I visited the Newport, Rhode Island Masonic Temple, which at that time I thought was absolutely fantastic. I think that was built in 1805. Uh, still with some Revolutionary War history behind that building as well. Uh, unfortunately, when I visited, uh, they were in the process of cleaning it out and selling the building. And recently I went on YouTube and uh, I was given a wide tour, the entire building at the time. And now it's condos and I got to see what the building now looks like and it really broke my heart. But while I was there, the brother kept mentioning, you've got to come to this building in Warren, Rhode Island. And I said, why? And they mentioned, he said, well, it's made with wood from a ship. I said, wow, that's, that's really, well, I can't say that word, but that's really awesome. Um, I said, I can't wait to get there. And like anything else, like us Freemasons, we keep putting things off and off and off and off and off. Well, it took me 30 years, guys, and I finally made it today. And I am not disappointed in one least. It, this, is un, this is one of my highlights in my Masonic career to be in this building today. But once I found out that the Masonic Curators booked this building to do a few episodes, I got right online. I did some reading up on Washington Lodge number three. I did some reading up about the building. And then I hit eBay right away to see what I could find for sale for Warren, Rhode Island Masonic Temple. And luckily, I found this. Now, we will have better pictures to show once the video is posted. But I found the only Masonic postcard that shows the Warren, Rhode Island Masonic Temple. And I postmarked about 1947. And I hesitated to buy this, didn't hesitate to buy this right away. Um, that leads us into our episode, Masonic Postcards. Masonic Postcards are another item. Now, I had just done an episode on toys and Freemasonry. One category goes into the next. John and I did an episode just recently about decanters. And there are decanter collectors out there, and decanters have been made for all types of different things. That's one category, masonry. Another category is decanters. So postcards fall in that same category. We have Masonic postcards, and then we have postcards. And yes, folks, there are people out there that collect postcards. And postcard collecting were very popular in the 1920s, 1930s. Now, believe it or not, postcards have a history of going back to almost 200 years now. And there's quite a few write-ups and good write-ups about the postcard um, online. And today I'm only going to talk about basically a few of the exterior views. And basically I'm going to talk about the single back. And if I can find one. <laughs> oh. And the divided or double back. And if you go on to some of these sites that talks all about postcards, you will understand what these all mean. Now... The majority of postcards that I have seen online are basically the exterior shots of Masonic buildings, which are fantastic. There are a few that show the interior views. Masonic postcards have also been done for certain conventions such as Knight Templar conventions, Masonic meetings, and Shrine conventions. Uh, there are the American Humor postcards. Uh, most of them you're going to find either a Mason or a Shriner, and it's always going to say, uh, a mason or shriner wearing his first pin. And it's always going to be a baby wearing a diaper with a Masonic pin in the diaper. Or you come across the American version, I love to love a mason uh, postcard. Then there are the English postcards. The Are You a Mason humor postcards that came out. And then there are various other specialty cards such as the leather Masonic postcard. Uh, the embossed Masonic postcard, and special effects Masonic postcards, such as 
Reading, Massachusetts. Now, I hope when the photograph is taken, you can see this. This is rather, rather unusual because I believe it is a three-layer card. <clears throat> the building still stands in Reading, Massachusetts, but is no longer used as a Masonic building. Uh, it is called the Masonic Block. What they did was they put a thin layer of copper sheeting between the two layers of the postcard. So when you hold it up to the light a certain way, it looks like the lights are on in the building. Very unusual uh, process there. And they did that to a number of different postcards. Now, why are postcards interesting and historical? Well, first of all, they show a time period of, of our buildings when sometimes not many uh, exterior photographs were taken of our buildings or have survived. Second, they also can be historical significance to the building itself. Now, <clears throat> with Warren, Rhode Island, I just found out that part of this building at one time, and you're going to learn more about it shortly, there was a schoolhouse and they had a cupola on the roof. Today, the cupola is not there, but in the postcard, there's the cupola. In another Masonic temple, uh, the Masonic Lodge wanted to put a flagpole back onto the roof of their Masonic temple, but the town denied them because there was no evidence that a flagpole was once there. I was lucky enough some months later to find a black and white photograph of the building, which showed, this is the colored version, but the black and white I gave them, so they have photographic evidence that the flagpole was indeed on top of the roof. Now, with the Warren Wood Island and the Arlington building, these are real photographs. They were all real photographs. There are also the black and white real photographs. But the colorized versions were for real photographs to begin with in the process. Now, the earlier ones pre-World War I were made in Germany, during World War I and afterwards were made here in the U.S. They have a printing process that the color is then added, and it almost gives the effect that the postcard is then hand-drawn uh, and then colored in, but it's not. These are actual, real photographs of the building. Therefore, they can be of historical value to the building. Such as with Warren, Rhode Island, we actually get to see that there looks like a lamppost out in front at one time with a bunch of bushes and whatnot that may have existed at one time in front of the building. And you can see that with a number of other buildings. What's also interesting about Masonic postcards is um, that they show us buildings that no longer exist, such as during the war years, <clears throat> a number of our Grand Lodges had what they call Army Navy Masonic Clubs. And here is one from Ayer, Massachusetts that was on the uh, military base there in air that no longer exists uh, you may live in a city or town that perhaps a masonic temple did exist at one time but because of natural disasters such as fires uh, tornadoes floods the building no longer exists such as franklin massachusetts which was tor torched by us a number of years ago and burnt to the ground or, like I like to say, human stupidity, when we sell our buildings and then we as humans then tear them down, like the Hudson, Massachusetts building that is way over to the right-hand side, side of this building in front. But not all Masonic uh, postcards are going to be marked Masonic temples or Masonic Lodge. Some of your lodges have met in bank buildings, uh, above stores, so on and so forth. So you're not going to find a picture of your Masonic building because maybe your lodge met above a bank in a three or four story building. But there is going to be a photograph or a postcard of that building, such as, now you may remember we were in Trinity Lodge in Clinton, which now meets in a one room schoolhouse that they purchased. But originally they met on High Street in this three-story brick building, which is built by the bank, they had the entire top floor. Now, this just says bank building, High Street, but this is the home of Trinity Lodge from 1882 until 1995. Or 
You may want to find Springfield, Massachusetts. Now, there are two Masonic temples still standing. Sadly, nothing exists in Springfield Masonically anymore. This is the old one downtown that was built around 1897. And I do not have with me the one that was built in 1924, which still stands today on State Street. That is now a school for the contemporary arts. Uh, now, not all Masonic buildings are going to have a postcard. Some may have multiple versions. Uh, I have one here that actually shows the street, Massachusetts Avenue. And you may remember a number of episodes ago, we did Cambridge, Massachusetts. The Cambridge Temple is way over here on the left-hand side, but it still shows the temple. We only knew of one postcard that existed of the temple. But over the next 30 years, we found seven more postcards that showed different views of the Cambridge Masonic Temple. So they're out there. Uh, they're a great historical piece, not only because of the picture. And if I can find one, here we go. You can't really make it out, and I'm not going to bother posting a picture of it. But most postcards, because they were sent off to individuals, will have writing on them. And you really need to stop to look at some of the writing because some of them do have references to the building or to the lodge that maybe the individual went to the night before. So that's kind of interesting to find. You're going to find these on eBay. You're going to find them on the internet. There are internet websites that sell just postcards. You're going to find these at flea markets. You're going to find them in antique stores. Um, there is a following for postcards. Uh, if you have the chance, check out the American or the English version of the human Masonic postcards. Some of them are really funny. Uh, some of them are highly collectible because of the content. Um, but they do show a period of time that really does not exist anymore. Uh, many of these buildings are gone now. Uh, though they still do make postcards today called the poly, polychromo. I believe that's how you say it which is basically just the colorized version uh, uh, of, a, of a print put on a postcard. Um, you can find them if you, maybe your lodge now is in a converted church, schoolhouse, uh, some other sort of building, you can find a house, you can find maybe a postcard of that building prior to your lodge buying, uh, buying the property and converting it to a Masonic temple. Um, so take your time. It's going to take years, maybe to find a postcard. Uh, I know there isn't one now of Warren, Rhode Island, cause I have it right here. So it took us 30 years just to find the seven postcards for Cambridge. It could take you 10 years to find one for your Masonic Lodge, but they're out there. Uh, with that, I want to thank you very much for chiming in. Remember, <clears throat> hit the like button, follow us on Facebook, and continue watching. Thank you.